If you like to do V-carves in your CNC router projects, one of the things you might have run into when you're doing them is V-carves that are just way too deep. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to solve that problem by using something called flat depth. IDCwoodcraft.com Now we're going to be working in the Vectric software to show you how to work with flat depth, but it's a really good way to not only keep your V-carves from getting too deep, but also making your projects look nice and smooth. You don't have really deep V-carves and you don't have really shallow V-carves. Now, I want to show you what flat depth is first so you understand what we're talking about and then I'm going to show you how to use this cool tool to make your CNC projects look even better. We have these little swirls here and there's two of them. They are identical as far as the design software is concerned. But you can see in this one, this is a V carving and that is going really deep. I'm going to hold it sideways a little bit so you can actually get a perspective of how deep that is. So this is the full depth of what a V-carve is. Now this is using a V-carve as well, except we are using flat depth. So you can see that the depth of this one is only about 0.1 deep relative to this one, which is, looks like it's almost three quarters of an inch deep. We're gonna go through this specific swirl in the Vectric software so that uh, you understand how to do this. Now I do wanna show you why this makes a difference I've got a project over here that is this big eagle. It's a project I made a long, long time ago. This is all done with a V carving. So what that means is we have V shapes, just like this. This kind of swirl here is ex almost exactly like the one I just showed you. But you see how it only goes to a certain depth. For a carve that's this big, if we were to do a full depth V carve on this, this would cut all the way through the material. This would probably cut all the way through the material, where this would be a shallow cut and what that does is that will imbalance your whole project and it just won't look so good so we're going to get into the vectric software i'm going to show you how to work with this flat depth stuff to make your cnc projects look better let's go now this will work on any of the vectric v carve or spire versions of your software if you have version 10 version 14 it doesn't matter now if you have cut 2d this will not work Cut 2D is a two-dimensional type of uh, version of the Vectric software, where the V-carving is a bit of a three-dimensional or 2.5-dimensional type of uh, carve. So first thing we're going to do is go over to Tool Paths, and we are going to select the first swirl, the one on the left. And we're going to go into the V-carving engraving tool path. You select that. Now, you'll notice at the very top we have under the cutting depths, it says start depth zero, which is what we're gonna start at. And then below that, it has this little checkbox called flat depth. We're not gonna use this one for the first example, the one on the left, but we will create a second tool path for the one on the right so you can see what the difference is. And I'll explain to you several things about how this is gonna work a little bit differently than doing a regular V-carve. First of all, we need to select our router bit. Now the router bit I am going to use is going to be a large 90 degree v-bit this is the idc woodcraft big stiffy 90 degree v-bit this is a three quarter inch wide cut and it cuts a quarter inch deep on a pass so if this bit is good for larger v carving projects as well as the 120 degree and the 150 degree and also the 60 degree v-bits the big stiffy series i'll link those down below so I'm just going to select it to show you how to select your router pits. If you're doing a V-carving toolpath, one of the things you're going to notice if you have the IDC Woodcraft database is in this database, not all the IDC Woodcraft bits are populated. Just the ones that Vectric thinks can be used for V-carving toolpaths. Now, if you don't have a full-blown database in your Vectric software, you can go to the IDC Woodcraft website and at the top of the the uh, screen and the menu bar it says database downloads you can get a full-blown vectric database download for your vectric software just uh, i'll link that down below or just go to idcwoodcraft.com i do recommend you get a database instead of trying to populate your own because you will really set yourself up for errors and because you have to ent enter so many numbers all right so we have the 
big stiffy 90 degree v-bit and if you look at your database you'll, you'll see it says 90 degree by three quarters of an inch that is selected we're just going to click select that's there and we are not going to do anything else we're just going to let it rock and roll with that i'm going to give it a name we're going to call it full depth v uh, v and we're going to calculate now you'll notice in the project area that we've got our tool path set up now and these blue lines represent the the path of the router bit so the router bit is going to come in with these red lines we're just going to rotate that a little bit it's going to start right in this area right here and then it's going to start following all these blue lines now you're going to see that there's not many cuts this is going to make it's going to be a very quick carve but this is cut in full depth. We're going to take a look at it by clicking Preview All Toolpaths. And so the router bit is doing its carving. You can see exactly what it looks like. Now this is going a little bit slow. So this is about what the project is going to be looking like. In fact, this is exactly what it's going to look like. So you can see that V is set up quite deep in the project. We don't want this project to be that deep, especially if we have lots of different things like that Eagle project I showed you before. We don't want a lot of big ones and a lot of small ones because you're gonna have all these varying depths and it's just not gonna look good. So this is where we wanna use the flat depth. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this tool path and then we're going to go into that one, select the second swirl, and then I'm gonna use the flat depth. I'll show you how to set that up. So in order to duplicate a tool path, if you're doing the exact same thing, it's easier than going back into creating another tool path and just trying to do the same thing. We're just going to come over to the tool path down in the lower right corner where it says full depth V, the name that we gave it. We're going to right click on it and we're going to click the, the menu item duplicate. And you'll see down below it says full depth V with a one in brackets. Now we're gonna go into that one. And you're gonna see in the screen, if you're using version 12 or higher, that your designs, everything that you designed in your software is gonna pop up on that screen. So in this case, we just have the two swirls that have popped up. First of all, I wanna select that second swirl. And now we're gonna come up under cutting depth, and we're gonna check flat depth. And in that, box i'm going to put a point one so what i am doing here is i am now setting the software up to instead of creating this really deep carve we're going to create it this deep and you notice the rest of this is going to be shallow so what this software is going to do is it's just going to go that deep and we are basically limiting what vector can do or how deep it can go so when we go in here we, we've selected flat depth and the router bit is the same bit, the V, uh, the V bit, the 90 uh, by three quarter inch wide, the big stiffy. And if you want to remove a lot of material from these, these areas, you notice on this project, I've, there's a lot of space here. We can use what we call clearance tools, or we can come in with like a one eighth end mill and do a lot of cleanup. If you wanted to, to remove a lot of uh, the material, not use the V bit as your clean out tool, you would come in and use the clearance tools right here. You just click that checkbox. You'll populate the checkbox with the bits you want. I would hit select and bring up the database. And now you notice the database has a lot more router bits in it because this is not a V carbon uh, uh, aspect of the tool path, only with the 90 degree V bit. This is a clearance tool. So we would use a 1 8 down cutting end mill probably. I would select that click select and now you see in the clearance tools that the uh, box is populated with a 1 8 down bit. Now I'm going to remove that uh, because I don't need it for this video but what this is going to do also is create two tool paths. You'll have to do a bit swap on it. Um, this is a, actually a good way to do it because it'll leave your surface quite smooth throughout most of that flat depth cut. So we're simply going to come down give this a new name we're going to call it flat depth and calculate. Now you notice the tool path looks very different. There's lots of blue lines. Now I'm going to check the other one. Uh, if I want to see the blue lines on the other one, you come into tool paths, there's this little check box and you can check that. That makes it visible. We're going to reset this preview so we can see these tool paths. And you can notice the one on the right has a lot more 
uh, tool paths on it. So here's what's happening. So for the deep one, it only has to make a few passes. But for this shallow one, it's got to clear out all this material. So what this router bit's going to do, it's going to make lots of passes based on the router bit step over, which is 8% that I've set for this bit for this video. So it's going to make quite a few more passes. So I'll show you what it does on the machine here in just a little bit. But we're going to run this uh, preview. And now you can see what the results will be. The one on the left is a much cleaner cut. And the one on the right, the bottom surface is kind of, it's got lots of little tiny V's in it because this router, this V bit, this pointed bit is moving over and making these various cuts. So it's going to be rougher. We've got a solution, which I'll show you in a minute. So what I'm going to do now is simply create the tool path by saving the tool path. We are going to select both tool paths. So I'm going to click the checkbox next to the word tool path. We're going to go over and save tool path. Save tool path to create the G code. And we're just going to call it flat depth video. And save that. Now I'm going to come over to my G Center software. We're going to load that file. And there it is. So now that we've got that loaded, we've got to set our project up. <clears throat> this is the project we're going to be carving on. I'm going to be doing the deep one over here, and I'm going to do the shallow one over here. Now, before I set this up, I want to talk to you about something that's kind of important. Well, really important. One of the things with CNC routing, uh, if you've been doing it for a while, then you know that you've made mistakes. You've forgotten to set the XYZ, or you didn't swap the router bit and hit start, or something went wrong. Most of the time when something goes wrong on your carve, it's because you missed a step during this point where you're going to take a project and you're going to set it up on your CNC router and you're going to clamp it down. You're going to, uh, you, you, you're going to set your XYZ points. You're going to check your router bits and what have you. There's lots of little steps in the setup. And so we miss that stuff. So that's, <laughs> I did the same thing. That's why I came up with the CNC project setup checklist. And what this checklist does is it makes sure that you are covering all your bases during your project setup so that your carve is going to run the way you want to without surprises. We cover the material, meaning the size of the material. We're making sure that the size here is matching what's in the design. We're making sure we got the right router bits, they're in good shape, and we've got our uh, um, the right G-code set up for that router bit and of course setting up your XYZ start points and some other things that we don't think about that much. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to set this project up. I'm going to use clamps, these homemade clamps that I made. Uh, these guys right here, these are great. I love making the wooden clamps and using them because if we do a carving and our router bit happens to uh, hit that because we didn't plan where that router bit's going to go relative to the clamp, it'll cut right through the clamp and just keep on going. Where metal clamps will potentially cause some damage to your router bits. you got a CNC router. You can make your own clamps. IDC Woodcraft has this file available for you. I will link that below in the video and you can get that off the idcwoodcraft.com website. So I'm going to set this project up following this checklist because I want to make sure it's done right. And I don't want surprises. I don't want to break a router bit. And then we'll come right back. All right. So we've got the final thing to do on the checklist. And that is done, which is remove anything that's sitting on the table. So that's gone. And now it is time to start. Remember, on this little project here, this is going to be the uh, deep one. The full view bit and this one over here will be the flat depth one. So let's rock this out. Let's hit the start button. Now we're going to go into the flat depth. What I want you to do is pay attention to how many passes the router bit is making. So what the router bit is doing, it's started in the middle, and now it's making lots of little passes as it's doing a step over. But you can see it is not going past 
the depth that I set, which is a point one. So here we have that deep one, and that actually ran pretty quick. It ran in about maybe a minute, maybe a little bit less. And we have the shallow one here, and this took about five minutes to carve because we we're doing the step over on this with the uh, with the V-bit. One of the other reasons you want to use a flat depth in your project is if you're going to do epoxy pours. Your epoxy pour pockets need to be very shallow. Most epoxies are designed for that unless you use a deep pour epoxy, which takes a lot longer to set. So we've got that. You see this here, but one of the drawbacks to doing this flat depth thing, it's a little rough, but sometimes you're going to get chips out over here, just wood that's hanging on, or the bottom of that is just feeling a little rough. So one of the things that you have to deal with is sandpaper. You have to get in there with your hand and sand all that out. But if you've got lots of V-carves with like that, that's really inefficient. This is where I love to use these sanding brushes. These are different grit sanding brushes. And what you do is use them on a Dremel or rotary tool of some sort. And you just come in and you just start cleaning it up. And really quickly, it cleans it up really fast. So I'm going to do that real quick. I'll just do it to one side. And, and we're done. Adam, my camera guy, rub your finger on there. Now feel the other side. How different is that? Oh, that's night and day. Yeah. So that just took me, what, five seconds. So this is something you definitely want to get. These are carried at IDC Woodcraft. You got the yellow, which is, what grit is that? 120, yeah, 240, 180 grit, and 400 grit. These are something that you should have in your, your toolbox for your finished work. I'll link that down below. So anyway, going back to this whole thing is this flat depth. Now you know how to work with it in the Vectric software. Check the links down below in the description. Get these brushes and also get the checklist. And if this video is helpful, give me a thumbs up. I'd love to see a comment, something I might have missed, or some things that you do with the flat depth and why you would use a flat depth in your CNC projects if you've done it before and subscribe to the channel. I got lots of videos to walk you through stuff like this. I'm Garrett with IDC Woodcraft, where you get your CNC router bits from. Have a great day, better tomorrow, and happy CNC. IDCWoodcraft.com